Good evening, good evening, and welcome to the North Peoria Bible Class Hour. Uh, we are delighted to again come into your homes and wherever you by means of this venue. Uh, we come in every Wednesday night at six o'clock uh, to bring a quick and brief word from the Lord in the middle of the week. As I often say to you, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and that is the very subject we're going to be talking about tonight. And I will rejoice, and I will be glad, and it's another day that the Lord has allowed us to see, to be a part of, not because we've all been that good, but because God is good. Uh, and we thank him tonight for lengthening out our lives, not because of anything that we've done, uh, anything that we've good that we've done. It's because God just loves us like that. And isn't it good to be loved by the Lord? This is his day. Uh, every day is. And so we've come tonight uh, to tell him thank you uh, and just to share a quick word from the Lord on tonight. So as you are coming in, good to see those who are in the class early on tonight. Uh, Sister Alicia, Sister Carolyn, uh, Sister Kendra, and Latrice, good to have you all. Sister Jeanette Richardson. Uh, Teg, tell somebody uh, that the Bible class hour is on. Reach down and press the share button and to make certain that this lesson is able to be in the hands of perhaps someone who's going to need just a quick word from the Lord in the middle of the week. Uh, we're delighted that God has been so kind to you and to me uh, as to allow us to be here on tonight. Uh, I'm certain that he's doing uh, great blessings in your life right now. Because if it was not, you would not be able to be here and to be able to hear this word from the Lord on tonight. So we really come uh, to express our appreciations to him for all that he does and continues to do for us in our lives. And so again, we're delighted to have you in the Bible class hour on today. Uh, there are a few announcements that we'll make while we're waiting for others to come in. Uh, and uh, we want you to give an ear to these announcements. We are uh, aware that... Uh, made us aware that Brother Bradford, uh, Sister Shirley Bradford, made us aware that her husband's uh, viewing will be this coming uh, Thursday. Brother Bradford will be able to be viewed from 10 a.m. on to 8 p.m. at Jack's Memory Chapel. Again, uh, Sister Shirley Bradford informed us that Brother Bradford, her husband, will be able to be viewed on this coming Thursday from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. You can go by the mortuary and view him. Some have asked concerning what are the viewing hours, and that is the, uh, the time, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on this coming Thursday. We extend our condolences to Sister Bradford and to the entire family in that loss, but we know that God is in the middle of it with you. Uh, whenever we sustain... ...verses will be at 11 o'clock on this coming Friday at the mortuary. So again... Keep this family lifted high uh, in prayer. And then tonight, <clears throat> on a national basis, we are mourning the loss of General Colin Powell, uh, a true statesman, uh, a true American in every sense of the word, uh, a very class act in every sense of the word. And so we are extending our condolences to the Colin Powell family and the loss of General Powell. Uh, certainly he made contributions to our time, to our land, and to our society, and to our world. Uh, and we're prayerful for his family as they sustain that loss. And our nation has sustained the loss uh, in the losing of General Powell. So we're praying for him on tonight, his family on tonight. We're mindful of our own members. Sister Martha Green is, continues to be uh, in need of our prayer. Pray for Sister Martha Green that God will be with her uh, and lessen the difficulties and pains that she's experiencing. So keep uh, them her in prayer. We're mindful of Sister Alice Stewart, uh, who lost her husband, uh, Brother Walter Stewart, uh, on just a day or so ago in Winfield, Alabama. Uh, we're praying for Sister Alice. We do know that uh, Brother uh, Stewart uh, knew him well, uh, was a, a great gentleman, and so we are praying for Sister Alice and that loss. I want you to know that we're lifting you up high, uh, that God will be with you in this time of loss that you have sustained. Uh, there's so much that's been going on in terms of losses uh, with our viewing audience and with our members uh, Sister Alice is one of our virtual members in Winfield, and so we are, again, praying for you, Sister Alice, and this loss, and for your family, that God will sustain you. We also want to uh, have you remember Sister Zena uh, and Linda Vassar, who are, again, virtual members of our, of our listening audience who listen regularly to us. 
Uh, they're both dealing with some illnesses, and so we're praying for uh, Sister Zena and for uh, Sister Linda Vassar that they'll have great recoveries and that God will be with them uh, during that time of sickness. Uh, we want you also to be mindful that we're going to feed 200 families for the holiday. We're going to be buying a food for 200 families. Uh, and so if you'd like to participate with us in uh, feeding 200 families who are going to be needy families uh, during the holiday season, then you can certainly uh, do that on Sundays. The cash app information will be available. Uh, it is a dollar sign North Peoria. You'll see if you care to donate uh, to the feeding of those 200 families, and we will certainly use it to that uh, for that purpose in feeding those who are hungry. But by the grace of God, it could be us having to give to you uh, as opposed to you being able to give to someone else who is in need. And so we want to be able to let them know uh, that the church community, that the North Peoria Church in particular, uh, are concerned about them and will be ministering to them in feeding 200 families uh, for the Thanksgiving holidays. The North Peoria will be mindful of that as there's some work we must do to prepare for that. Uh, we're also uh, mindful that this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, and we are certainly prayerful for all of those of you who've lost loved ones uh, to this dreaded disease of cancer. And we are certainly jubilated and in jubilation over those who have survived this uh, dreaded disease and who are still present with us today because God said yes. And we're delighted that God has said yes to you. And so again, we remind uh, all of our listeners, particularly those who are uh, involved in, in awareness uh, that we take necessary steps, particularly our sisters in Christ and others, uh, to make sure that you are careful as to get all of the tests that needed to be done and need to be done during Breast Cancer Awareness Month and make sure you take care of your bodies in a regular way. Uh, as we then look at this list that grows every week of those who are sick, those who have lost loved ones, let's take a moment now before we go into the lesson tonight just to go to God in prayer and thank him for what he has done uh, and solicit him to come into the houses and homes and byways and highways and hedges of our nation and our world to minister to those who need ministering to uh, on tonight. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for being an everlasting God. Thank you for being a patient God. Thank you for being a caring God and a provisional God. Thank you for everything that you do, everything that you have done and everything that you're getting ready to do. Father, we love you, we adore you, we magnify you, and we magnify your name. We ask you now to be with all of those whose names I have called on this broadcast on tonight. For, Father, all of us need you. We stand in need of your assistance uh, tonight. Many of us who have not even expressed a uh, prayer request tonight need you, Lord. We want you to come into our lives and to visit with us and to minister to us and they give us those things that we stand in need of. Continue now to be with this nation, with this world, with our cities and towns, with our churches. Father, continue to bless, heal, and set free. Lord, we again thank you in advance for the victory. We thank you in advance for what you're getting ready to do. We we'll realize that you want what is the best for us. Continue now to be with us through this brief lesson tonight. May there be someone who will hear something that might be helpful to them as we are but graveyard travelers headed for a distant and better city whose builder and maker is you. Continue now to hold us up, take care of us, and do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And we will always call your name blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, as we look tonight uh, at this brief lesson tonight, one of my favorite passages that I quote every Wednesday night and most times on Sunday morning is Psalms 118 and verse number 24. If you were wondering where it was found, that is the, that's the text, Psalms 118 and verse number 24. David being the author of that psalm, and I love to quote it in a regular way because it says volumes uh, for me and to me and hopefully to others. David says in these words in the 24th verse, he says, uh, this is the day which the Lord hath made. And then he says, we will rejoice and be glad in it. First of all, he says, this is the day. And I want you all to know that this is the day. This is the only day that God has uh, given us for tomorrow 
is not promised and yesterday is gone. This is the day. Uh, we need to really thank God right now. Even if you're in the midst of something that is not pleasant in your life, even if you're going through some stuff right now, uh, let's take a moment and just tell God, thank you. For this is the day that we ought to do that. Now, uh, some people today live their lives in yesterday. All they can think about and talk about is yesterday. But I stopped by long enough to tell you tonight that yesterday is history. All that we accomplished, all that we did, all that we went through, all that we've been through is over the shoulder. Uh, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not yet here. And who knows, but tonight the Lord may touch any of us on our shoulders and say it's time to move to a distant land. And so all we have, brothers and sisters, is right now. So I'm thanking God tonight for my right now. Now, I know some of us have some past experiences that were great, some that were hurtful. But right now, this is the day that the Lord has made. Paul said it this way, Philippians 3, verses 12 through 14. He says, I press, I press uh, toward the mark of the calling in Christ Jesus. Uh, and then he says in those verses, I press to reach to the end of the race. He says, I'm forgetting those things that are in the past of the race and to that prize which is before me. He said, I, I realize I'm forgetting about yesterday. I, I'm forgetting about the past and I'm pressing toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Paul said, don't keep looking over your shoulder because that time is gone. Uh, he says, you ought to look at your right now and thank God for whatever conditions you're in right now. Now, it may not be the best, but I stop by to tell you God will work it out. If you're going through something right now, there are some Christians who are really in depression right now. And this lesson is partly to you. There are some Christians who are going through something right now that's so heavy that it keeps them pressed down every day. There's someone who has some heavy burden, burdens lifted to be lifted. There are some who need to have them lifted off your shoulders. You may be in this feed right now. There are many of you who are going through right now and it's heavy, it's difficult, but I've stopped by long enough to tell you this is the day that the Lord has paid, uh, made and he will make a way out of your conflict, a way out of your difficulty and a way out of your depression. All you have to do is look up uh, and the Lord will intervene in your life. That's not wishful thinking. That's not just some um, something I'm saying to try and make you feel better. Uh, it's something that is very true. God will provide. God can take your past bitter experiences and your present downness right now and lift you higher than you've ever been in your life. You have to trust God. Well, preacher, I want to know, tell me then, how do I maximize my right now? How do I get the best out of my every day? How do I realize this is the day that the Lord has made? How can I do? I'm going to give you four or five things that I think are important. You can go back and listen to them later on. But if you're going to live today, if you're going to realize this is the day that the Lord has made, number one, you ought to prioritize your day. When you get up and you speak to God first, that's the first thing you ought to do. I always speak to God before I speak to men. Because if I don't speak to God first, I might say some things to men that I may not uh, ought to say. So the first thing you do when you realize this is the day, when you get up, when you first open your eyes, when you first realize that your heart is beat all night long, when you realize that God has put air in your lungs all night long, when you realize he sustains you while you slept, the first thing you do to realize this is the day is that you talk to him and then tell him thank you. Second thing is that when you get up and you tell him thank you, number two, prioritize. Decide what is important today. Decide on what is most important. You're not going to get everything done today. There's going to be something left undone. I don't care how much you accomplish in one day. There's going to be something left undone. 
So what I do with my life, and this is a suggestion to you, is that I prioritize those things that are most important to God and to me. I want to get those things done first. Sometimes, because I've gotten 39 plus, I'll make a list at night before I go to bed of the things in the order that I want to see them accomplished and ask God to assist me in getting them done. And during the day when I accomplish them, I'll mark them off one by one. Uh, and say, this is what I've accomplished on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. So I prioritize. I decide what I'm going to get done because something is going to be left undone. You're not going to get it all done. And listen to me, folks who are perfectionists, folks who are pressing toward excellence all the time, realize that you may do that, but I don't care how excellent your material, how excellent your work, how excellent your concept is, there's something that's going to be left undone. Get the weightier things done. Uh, Moses' father-in-law said to him, This which thou doest is too much for thee. So pick you some men and let them judge the lesser matters, and you handle the greater matters, because you will never get it all done. Preachers, educators, nurses, doctors, whomever you happen to be, you will not get it all done in one day. So what you do is prioritize. After you talk to God, Prioritize, set priority. And I want you to know that two things ought to be a priority to you. Family, uh, God and family. Uh, they ought to come first. Some folk put work first and they put other things first. I'm telling you now that when you prioritize, God and family ought to come first. Uh, when you put God first, other things fall in line. So then prioritize. Number two, always in a day's time, reevaluate. Evaluate your day, but sometimes what we need to do to be successful is reevaluate. If I see that something is not being done, if I realize time is getting away from me, if I realize that this this eight hours, this nine hours that I have is getting away from me, and I'm not going to get it all done, and I set a priority early, then I reevaluate my priorities and I reevaluate my life, reevaluate what I'm doing. And some people can evaluate you, but they will never reevaluate themselves. They will never evaluate their time, their effort, their energy, and their successes. You need to reevaluate. Number one, talk to God. Number two, prioritize. Number three, reevaluate where you are. In the middle of the day, if you see something is not quite there and you can't get it straight, reevaluate. Then number uh, four, whatever this one is, when you prioritize, after you reevaluate it, Promote excellence. Whatever you do, my grandfather told me when I was a boy, he said, son, whatever you do is worth doing well. If you're going to half do it, don't do it at all. And I tell my grandchildren, I reward them when their grades are A's and B's. I don't reward things that are not excellent. I will let them know I think they are excellent, but their behavior and sometimes their actions is less than excellent. It takes work to produce excellence. It takes a lot to produce excellence. And God expects us not to let our best uh, be overwhelmed by better. In other words, our better ought to become our best. I tell my son, my grandson in particular, who is at that age now where he's getting ready to drive and he wants an automobile. I said, well, look, if you want something and you want me to help you, make sure you're putting your best foot forward. Make sure you're bringing excellence home. Yeah, we want to be characterized by being people of excellence. One of the things I admired about General Colin Powell was his savvy, was his, his, his ability to speak and his ability uh, to promote excellence in the military, excellence in his own personal life, excellence in his family's life, excellence for our nation. And we need to work toward not being mediocre, but to work toward being excellence, uh, excellent at what we do. Is there anybody out there who understand what I'm saying? Number one, talk to God. Number two, prioritize. Number three, reevaluate. Number four, if you realize this is the day the Lord has made, be the best that you can be. Be the best you that you can be all the time. Even when folk are antagonizing you, even when life is getting heavy, when folk are aggravating you to death, then you need to look at your best self to be the best person I know I can be. What does it value me to curse someone out in the middle of the day? 
What is it about? How does it value God or me to be ugly and nasty all day long? We need to understand that we want excellence in terms of our disposition and our position. Whatever it is, promote excellence. So again, after excellence, I want to say, number one, I'm going to keep these in your mind as you go back through them. Talk to God. Number two, prioritize. Number three, reevaluate. Number four, promote excellence in the day of the Lord. And then number five, use time. Don't waste it. Use time. Don't lose time. Use time. Everybody has the same amount of time. But have you noticed some folk get more done with the time they have than you get with the time you have? Well, what I've learned is that you got to realize you got to use time. You can't waste it, uh, amen. You, you, you can't throw it away. Uh, we all got the same amount of minutes per day. And so I want to take the time during the day that the Lord has given me to use my time wisely. When I drive through the inner city, I see so many African-American young men, and now as well other nationalities, standing on street corners at one o'clock, two o'clock in the day, the pants sagging off their behind with, with no kind of focus, with no kind of direction. They're just standing on the corner, uh, uh, just wasting time, doing nothing with time, uh, no kind of direction. And I feel like sometimes just stopping by and saying, what is your purpose? Where are you going? What are you doing with your life? Do you understand that God isn't going to go back and give you more time. God has allowed you this time and you ought to use it wise. I'm not going to spend all my day worried about what folks say about me. I'm not going to spend all my time worried about mistakes that I have made. I'm not going to spend all of my time going back over something that I knew I couldn't have helped. I'm not going to spend all my time worried with family members who won't listen and won't cooperate. I'm past that. I'm to the point where every day is a gift. Every minute is a gift. Every hour is a gift. And I'm trying in these days to use my time wisely. Because soon, brothers and sisters, time will be up and time will be over. And God will give you no more time. Spend some time thanking him. Spend some time at your quiet place. Uh, spend some time laughing during the day. Spend some time smiling and sharing with somebody else. Spend some time lifting up somebody else. Spend some time doing something that you enjoy doing because time will soon be up. So use your time wisely. Don't get to the end of the day and say what I should have, could have, would have. Do things now because you don't know that you're going to make it through the day. So what again are these? I'm going to keep redundantly repeating this as I close. Number one, talk to God in the mornings. Number two, prioritize. Number three, reevaluate. Uh, number four, uh, excellence. Number five, use your time wisely. And then number six, uh, get up and get started. Uh, how many folks sit down and plan all day but never do anything? How many folks got worthy goals that they want to accomplish but never get up and go do anything? Folk can sit down and philosophize all day long about what they're going to accomplish and what they're going to do and never get it done. Get up and get busy. Get up and get on the job. Uh, I tell young folk whenever my sons are, were coming along and my children were coming along uh, that the early bird gets the worm. Somebody said, well, I'm not worm hunting. Well, then you're going to be hungry if you're a bird because unless you get up, other birds are looking for the same thing you are. And somebody will get that worm that you intended to get. Get up and get busy. If you've got plans tonight of doing something with your life, if you want to go somewhere with your life, you want to accomplish something with your life. You want to go back to school and get your education. You want to go to a training school, learn how to be uh, uh, some kind of semi-professional. You want to do something with your life. I encourage you tonight, stop planning and get up and get it done. Get up tonight. Get up right now and start looking up something on the internet. Start getting something in line. So again, uh, prioritize, reevaluate, excellence, use time, get started, and then live life forward. Don't live life backwards. Live life forward. A few uh, years ago, a few weeks ago, I talked uh, on this program about why the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. I want, you to, I want you to underline, underscore that. Why is the windshield bigger than the rearview mirror? 
And in that text and in that sermon, I said, it's because it's more important to see where you're going because you already know where you've been. Hallelujah. It's important to see where you're going because I already know where I just came from. I don't need to keep looking back. I need to look ahead with God's planning. So again, tonight, live life forward. Live life saying, uh, I don't always have to be in this now moment. If life is not good, I can move from my now moment to a different moment tomorrow. I don't always have to be down on my luck because I didn't get that guy. That guy didn't ask me to marry him. That woman uh, said no to me. Uh, I don't have anybody in my life. Or I wanted somebody in my life and they won't come. Seem like God won't send anybody to me. Look like I, I, I keep getting close, but God hasn't given me the mate that I want. He hasn't given me children and I want to be married and I wanted this and I want that. Trust God and trust God's timing because God's timing is different than yours. But if you wait on the Lord, Isaiah 40, God will send you in due season what he know you need. So again, live life forward. Yesterday hasn't come yet. And when it does come, it'll be today. So again, I'm living life not based on past. I'm not letting memory uh, keep me from enjoying my today. Yeah, you may be through a divorce. Perhaps you went through a troubled divorce. Maybe perhaps you went through all kinds of mess in your divorce. Perhaps he left you with nothing or she left you with nothing and you don't know how in the world you're going to get through it. But I stop by it. Don't live your life worried about the bad man that you had. Think about the good man that God is going to send you. Don't spend your life thinking about the bad woman that you just had. Spend your life thinking about the good woman that God's got for you. Because we spend too much of our time over past mistakes, over things that happened yesterday. Live life forward. As I get ready to close, end each day with God. Let me go back over them again as we close tonight. Praise God Almighty. Number one, start your day with God. Pray. Ask God for what you need. Tell him what you want. Don't let anybody tell you you can't ask God for what you want. Because they don't have enough faith to ask God for. It doesn't mean that you can't get it from God. Perhaps those folk have good mates, had enough faith to ask God for it. And God delivered. We walk in faith. We walk by faith, 2 Corinthians 5. So get up. Talk to God first. Tell God, help me with this day. Guide my feet. Hold my trembling hand. Help me to see opportunities. Help me to bless somebody, Lord. Help me to speak blessings over the lives of others. And I know those blessings are come back to me. Get up and talk to God. Tell him thank you for all he's done and all he's doing. And watch God when you talk to him make a way for you. The first thing you do is talk to him. Then set a priority on your day. Uh, yeah, tell God, Lord, this is what I want to accomplish. And this is what I want to do today. Help me, Lord, make it come to pass. I can't make this journey without you. Can't make one step without you. I can't even breathe without you. You are the air that I breathe. You keep my mind regulated. Can't make it without you, Lord. Prioritize with me in my day. And then, Lord, during the course of the day, when I see it all not going to work out, help me to reevaluate. Help me to look then at what I need to do next to accomplish the goals that I have in life. Uh, Lord, give me the strength to do it. Uh, then, Lord, help me to be excellent in every way that I can be excellent, both in my position and disposition. Help me to be all that I can. Help me to be my best self. Help me not to let people take me outside of myself. Help me, Father, to be in control of me. I can't control anybody else, Lord. Help me to control me. Help me to be the best me that I can be today. Hold me in my place. Keep me from doing that which I ought not do. I want excellence. Then, Lord, the time the 24 hours that you've given me. Help me to use my time wisely. Thank you for every minute. Thank you for every second. Thank you for not letting me skip uh, a heartbeat tonight. Thank you, Lord, for keeping everything regulated. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. Help me to always be mindful minute by minute that life is lived 
but one second at a time, one minute at a time, one hour at a time, and one day at a time. You don't give us any more time than that, Lord. Help me to use these minutes and seconds that I have wisely. Lord, help me to get up and get started and stop planning, stop saying what I want to do, what I should do, what I could have, would have, should have. Lord, help me to get done. Help me to get up and to get moving forward on the plans I have. Lord, help me then to end every day with you. I like my favorite time of the day is just before sunset. A lot of folk who know me and know me well that I like, uh, a lot of folk like mornings and they love to see the sun rise in the mornings and they love to see it come up and they're, they're really excited about being in the presence of God and in his presence early in the morning. And many of you may be early morning people and that's wonderful. My metabolism is, is, is different and so uh, I am a late person, I'm a night person. And so because of that, the evening is my time. Every king in biblical time would have a garden by his castle. And the king would go out with his closest friends and his allies and confidants, and they would take a walk in the garden in the cool of the evening to look and appreciate all the beauty that God had given them. As I watch every day, and sometimes I'll stand here in Oklahoma, the sunsets are gorgeous. Sometimes I'll stand and watch God lower the shades of the sun. I watch him allow it to gradually drop below the horizon. And when it's getting dark here, somebody else is getting light from God's sun. But as I do that, I think about God allowing me to close out another day, giving me enough breath and enough steps and enough sense to realize and appreciate that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. So as you get ready to end your day, end it with God. End it with Elohim. End it with El Shaddai. End it with the man who woke you up and who allowed you to matriculate all through the day. End it by telling him thank you one more time for one more day. And when you do that, you'll find as you close out your day, Lord, I didn't do everything as I needed to do. I may have fallen during the day. I may have had a hiccup during the day. I wasn't my best me today. But as you close it out, and you close it with God, you can hear him sweetly say to you, child, it's okay. My grace is sufficient for you. What I want you to do is try it all over tomorrow. You may have missed it today, but I'm going to give you one more chance. And when you get up in the morning, try it all over again. Praise God Almighty. Isn't he a mighty God? This is the day that the Lord hath made. And tomorrow morning, I don't care what's going on in your life. Get up and give God some glory. And watch him change your life. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. For we know that you are mighty God. You walked on waters. You called the sun to be where it is. You called the moon into place. You you spoke time into existence. We know you're my God. We know that you walked up to a grave and told a dead man to get up. We know that you walked on top of the waters and you said to it, peace be still. We know you are mighty God. We know, Father, you keep the water from overshadowing the earth and overcoming it. You pile the mountains high and you put the flowers down and send it them with perfume. We know you are a mighty God. So what we come tonight, Lord, to do is to acknowledge who you are. And that is to thank you for being God all by yourself. We ask now that you visit with all those names I've called in the early parts of the service. Those who need you, Father, please visit with them. Strengthen every sad heart, lift every bowed head. Comfort everybody who needs to be comforted. Put your hand in where it needs to be. Lift us higher, Father. Help us to be better people tomorrow than we were today. Father, if you will, be with this virus infected country. Allow it to leave so we can once again enjoy the fellowship, the closeness of the hour when we praise your name on Sunday mornings. Lord, continue to be with our families, keep them safe. 
Be with our viewers and keep us safe. And what we will do for all of this that we're asking is that every time we get an opportunity, we'll call your name and call it blessed. And thank you and realize that everything that we got come from you. We love you. We adore you. We put no one before you. We love you, Lord. Thank you. We ask it all in the name of him who died for us on Calvary. His name is Jesus. In his name, amen, amen. If you found this lesson to be helpful to you in any way at all, I want you to do something for me right now. Reach down and press the share button. If you're still with us and you're listening to the, the lesson, whomever you are, many of you will share, some of you will not, but I ask you if you will tonight to share this lesson. I believe in this critical time in which we live that men need all the Jesus that they can get and they need the power of the word. So if you will tonight, someone needs to reevaluate, someone needs to prioritize, someone needs excellence, somebody needs uh, to get started. So if you will, reach down now and press the share button. And uh, hopefully this lesson will end up in the hands of somebody who's looking for the Lord and they want to be able to hear from him on tonight. Do not forget this coming Sunday morning, we're going to have a marvelous, marvelous time in the Lord. Our new worship leader, uh, Brother Malcolm Himes, is with us, and he is doing a marvelous job, marvelous job, and we are looking forward to having a great time. Tune in uh, this coming Sunday at 10 a.m., and you're certainly going to enjoy yourself in the Lord because we do so every Sunday. God bless you. God keep you. May hold you in the palm of his hand, and may he give you the peace that you are in need of. God bless.